Yo, what's going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new episode of Saturday Night Locals. Here we are in episode 100, the big 100. Super happy to finally have hit this sort of milestone. Thank you guys for sticking around for all 100 episodes. Uh, this is one of my favorite series to produce just because it's something I can just do very casually while I play and... Um, you know, just kind of sit back and uh, review gameplay. Very low-key, uh, and I like it a lot. And I'm glad you guys like it, and uh, just again, thank you for the support on 100 episodes. Um, every like, every comment, every view, all that stuff. I really appreciate you guys joining me um, for all of these. So, looking forward to another 100 more in time to come. So, let's, uh, let's hop right into this here. Uh, we are in round three, and uh, last round we played against Snake Eyes Fire King, and we... Uh, well, if you want to see how that match played out, I'll leave a link up to the top right. Um, but our current record is 1-1, one and, one, and uh, we need to not be X2, ideal, so we can get some uh, store credits. And uh, we win die roll here, as you can tell. Obviously, we're playing Speedway Kashira, as you can tell. And uh, go first, leading with Small World, a new addition to the deck list, at least for this particular local, so I was trying it out. Um, I don't really like the card that much. Yeah. If I'm being honest, um, it's not my it's not my favorite card to play. I did think it was interesting at some points, uh, as you see here, using it to go from Scareclaw Cash into Unicorn uh, at the cost of main decking something like Droll. I suppose you could also main deck something like Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chill. Um, I, I kind of like Droll in the side deck a bit more right now. Same thing um, can be said with like Ghost Bell, I guess. Although I do main two copies of Ghost Bell right now, but I do side the third. But uh, yeah, I think I think Droll's a little bit better in the side, uh, in my personal opinion. And my opponent does Ash the Unicorn there, which kind of hurt to see. So that means I'm not going to be able to get Fenrir in play. But we do get to take a look at the extra deck and uh, see a whole wide range uh, of different things. Mostly Super Poly targets and U-Bell uh, fusion, which I had never seen before. Uh, this is literally my first time ever seeing that card. Uh, I wish I would have read it a little bit more because its summoning requirement is absolutely unhinged. U Bell plus one plus monsters uh, on the field. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of just insane. Uh, so, you could technically use U Bell on your side of the field and then all monsters your opponent controls uh, to fusion summon into it, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, and I didn't really take the time to read what it did, <laughs> admittedly, in that uh, moment. I should have. Uh, but, uh, yeah, as a result of my opponent Ash and Unicorn, uh, get kind of cut off there from continuing to extend. Um, yeah, and, like, you could argue, too, that, like, what I could have done differently there is, like, if that was never Small World, I could have just simply, like, spec Unicorn, or spec Fender and grab Unicorn, and then summon Scareclaw, make Draco Sack, summon two tokens, summon Tekatomborg, tag in a Piper, Excavate, make Baron, etc. Like, I could have done all of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. The small world just kind of pigeonholed me into doing a certain line, and ended up getting super punished uh, there by, uh, by Nash. And uh, Ash also really punishing my opponent super hard there. I saw them lead with Prosperity, banishing six. So in my mind, I'm like, this is an Ash right here. I'm like, I'm not, not going to Ash this. Um... It's either the, a really, really good bluff on their behalf, or their hand is really suboptimal. So that's just kind of been my thought process on Prosperity lately. If my opponent leads with Prosby and they banish 6 right off rip, I can probably tell that their hand is probably pretty weak. And uh, most of the time, I've been correct in that assumption. So, they pass, they set one. Uh, I'm kind of scared that... The set is something like Super Poly, just because I got to look at their extra deck, and I got to see just how many Super Poly targets there were. So I think I'm kind of calculating the risk right now of continue on to extend into something like Draco Sack to get Super Polyed, like on the summon of Rubber Band Shooter. They suck up the token, and uh, they suck up the Rubber Band Shooter, because they're both wind machines that go into something like Garura, unless I already banished the Garura. Um, wasn't looking at the uh, the screen, but yeah. And no, I didn't get rid of Guru, so I, I I'm seeing this right now, right? And I'm like, Guru is probably going to be the best one to get rid of. 
so to protect the play uh, that I'm trying to go for. So that's that's why I um, went battle phase first. Because I was like, you know what, I'm going to get some damage in, get another card out of the extra deck, and also kind of safeguard myself from super poly in the process. So, Because Mud Dragon is same type, but different attributes. So I guess he could have super polyed both the cash monsters there. Unless the Mud... Yeah, no, the Mud Dragon was still in the extra deck. Uh, but I guess since he didn't do that, maybe I figured it wasn't super poly. It's in German. Yeah, so all my all my speed break cards in German though. Um, I'm always happy to tell anybody any of the uh, the effects uh, of my cards, especially since it's just locals. Um, if I go to an event, uh, I usually swap out most of my German cards with English cards, just because like technically I can provide translations, but I don't want to spend time doing that, right? So if I do go to an event, I typically swap all my German cards for English ones. Um, and in the middle of explaining what Rubber Match Shooter does, my opponent drops the rock on me. Um, which is a little unfortunate. So, I go ahead and use Birth to bring back Unicorn here. And, uh, I'm thinking about going for Donner right now, as it would get me Fenrir back on board. Although I could have simply, well, yeah, I could have just used, uh... I mean, I could have just used Birth to bring back Fenrir, but then he can just go battle phase and clear the Fenrir anyways uh, with a nib. And then I just lose out on that, I guess. But then he loses his battle phase, but I have no interruptions. He can play freely in main phase two. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was an interesting decision I made there, but uh, my opponent just has like a really unplayable hand right now, I guess. So I guess it kind of doesn't matter what I did, but... You know, speaking from like what's like most optimal, maybe that wasn't necessarily the play. Attack for twenty-four. Yeah, and uh, they go ahead and try to super poly here, but yeah, they, I, they, the guru is out of the extra deck anyways. Um, can't mud dragon, and, and guru needs two mods with different names anyway. So we take game one there. Kind of unfortunately, my opponent opened really bad, so. You know, we kind of got the dub in a, a fairly easy way. But it is what it is. We're in game two now. My opponent's going to get to go first here. And I'm starting to see more of the deck's engine. Like, in game one, I really didn't see much. I, I really have no idea what I'm playing against. But I think by now, I was starting to get a hint of uh, what deck they were playing. I, I think prior to this, I heard of... A U Bell Unchained deck being a thing, because uh, I think one of my friends was like watching a replay uh, on DB when I was on a, a Discord call with them, and I think I remember them saying like, "Oh, U Bell Unchained," and uh, for some reason that that niche memory came to mind in this match. I was like, "Oh, maybe this is what that is, right?" Um, I sided in Dimension Shifter. I'm pretty sure sided in the third yeah. Bell. Uh, and outside of that, I can't remember necessarily what I said. And maybe Cosmics and Harpy's Feather Duster as well. Just kind of blanket uh, cards. And then my opponent goes Prosby for six, and I'm just seeing a bunch of cards like Samsara D Lotus, um, the Eternal, something Nightmare. I'm not sure. Nightmare Pain, I think is what that spell is called. And I'm just like, I have no idea what any of these cards do. I've literally no idea. Completely in the dark. It's got to be one of the worst feelings uh, going into a match where you're just kind of blind. Um, you're just basically hand trapping off instinct. You're not hand trapping off of knowledge. You're just kind of making educated guesses. And then when those educated guesses don't work out, you just feel stupid, right? At least that's how I feel. Sometimes like, well, I, that was a waste of a hand trap. I don't know what this stuff does. So they're trying to decide between taking Samsara D Lotus or the Nightmare Pain. Can I read that real quick? Which, yeah, of course I'm going to have to read that because I have no idea what it does. I think it's obviously a retrain on Samsara Lotus. Um, and don't ask me why they retrained it to become a U Bell card. Like, I have no idea why they did that. Um. I don't know if it has something to do with the the show, 
I think here. Whatever, I have no oh, idea. So they summon some Sarah D. Lotus, and this card, kind of similar to, like, uh, Lone Fire, has a tribute to activate its effect. Same thing with, like, what, Rescue Rabbit. So I Veiler it on summon, thinking that it'll cut them off from getting U-Bell directly out of the deck, a U-Bell monster, sure. which uh, we did see, I think, Spirit of U-Bell um, off that uh, Prosby 2. And then I see him link into the... Uh, the Yama, which is going to go ahead and search out for the Sharvara. And they're going to go ahead and pitch. Yeah, special summon 0 0 Fiend from Grave. Which I thought about belling this, but I don't. Um, and then I see him bring this back, and I'm like, well, that just gets them. You can use that effect again. Um, so, yeah. Realizing that, I should have belled that for sure, um, because that cuts them off of their. U Bell access technically, um, which I think is is the scariest part about this deck's end board is like the trap card that lets them fusion. And uh, obviously with the U Bell fusion, I think it's called uh, U Bell the Loving Defender Forever. Like I said, the summoning requirements in this card is one U Bell monster plus one plus effect monster in the field. If it's fusion summon, you can flick 500 damage to your opponent for each material used. Um, so they can burn up to like five from your field and then I mean I guess they could technically do six from your field the entire board plus the U-Bell so that's seven times five is what 3,500 um yeah that's like uh it's kind of insane cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects also you take no battle damage from uh, battles involving this card at the end of the damage step if this card battles opponent's monster inflict damage to your opponent equal to that opponent's monster attacking you to banish that monster uh yeah so Again, I'm lost at this point. I'm just kind of along for the ride, seeing where all this goes. Now looking for a good point to bell. Um, but I think I now realized him using that effect there to potentially bring back that Samsara D Lotus was the thing to hit. Um, it didn't even occur to me that it had 0-0 zero, zero attack uh, at that point. I thought they were trying to bring back the other, um, other part of that uh, Sacred Beast engine. Um, no, yeah, so. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I really appreciate my opponent being honest with me. They're, they're, you know, they're getting, trying to get their effects down right, because I literally have no idea what's going on. They can tell me it does one thing. I'm like, okay. Um, I mean, I try to read cards whenever I see it, whenever I hear something that sounds a little like, wait a second, it does that? Oh, let me read this. You know what I mean? Um, it sounds a little too good to be true, but yeah, I'm like, uh. Yeah, this is this is just all completely new to me. I've got no idea what's going on. I see him summon like the OG U Bell, uh, which I had to take a read on that. I was like, what does this thing even do? Uh, it says during the end phase, tribute one of their monster or destroy this card. When this card destroy except by its own effect, special when U Bell Terror incarnate from their hand, deck or graveyard. So I think at this point I was like expecting him to bring out like the Terror incarnate. And that would be some kind of issue I'd have to deal with alongside, obviously, the classic Unchained line of using Rage to link it to SP a Little Knight, which is already such an incredible combo. Um, so I thought, like, that was the gimmick, right? Like, Unchained, Rage, uh, plus U-Bell, Terror, Incarnate. Like, uh, yeah, so Maintenance are going to tribute the Samsara, and then Samsara will just bring itself back. In the past, and I was like, they set three alongside that. I was like, damn, that's crazy. A Harvey's Feather Duster would be a lifesaver right now, literally. I think Harvey's Feather Duster would honestly win me the game and the match outright. Um, so I start by special summoning uh, the Nightmare Unicorn, and they activate the trap, which is called Eternal Favorite. Uh, and this card says, Continuous Trap. Once per turn, you can activate one of these effects, but you can only use each effect of Eternal Favorite once per turn. Um, it says, Special Summon one of your U-Bell monsters that is banished from your graveyard. Neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is Special Summon. So I was like, maybe I could Bell that, right? But then it has another effect, which I somehow overlooked. It says, if you control U-Bell, discard one card, and send this face-up card to the graveyard. Fusion Summon one fusion monster from your actor deck using monsters from either field as material, including a U-Bell monster. Um... Yeah, and I don't think that occurred to me yet about uh, what could potentially happen. 
because I'm also kind of focusing on the Unchained Soul of Rage that's on the board right now and how I'm going to deal with that, tagging to SP. She's like, I know what that leads to, and I don't know what the trap leads to right now. So my opponent is just like letting me play because they know they're going to be able to super poly my entire field. Uh, and I'm trying to be careful to like play as... What's the word I'm looking for? Play as carefully around this Unchained Soul of Rage as I can, but I obviously missing a completely different threat. So if you ever play against this deck, stop them from getting u Bell on field, I guess would be uh, the way to go. Stop that Simsara D Lotus from resolving, like, stop Nightmare Pain, stop those cards, like, just don't let them get to the Omega Giga Super Poly, because that's gonna, that's gonna be rough. Unless you can get, like, an Omni Negate on field, like, really quick. Um, keep you bell off the field, right? That's also something else too, I guess. Um, because then they can't fusion into the, uh, you bell fusion. Because they need you bell specifically. Uh, and then here I go ahead and go into Draco Sack. And get my two tokens on field. Yeah, by battle or card effect. Yeah, and for, and for some reason I always thought that the unchained link monsters destroyed what they linked off with. But that's not, not true. Oh, um, yeah, tribute to destroy a card. Yeah. Uh, so I use Draco Sacks. Other effect, tribute itself as cost. Target a card in the field, destroy target it. Target the Unchained Soul Rage. And I'm like, he's either going to forcibly use the effect right now um, to go into something, or he's not. And since I only have tokens on field at the point, I don't think he can even link into SP Little Knight. Uh, because SP Little Knight needs effect monsters. So. Kind of dodge bullet there. I think I successfully played around that as best I could, uh, using as little cards as I could. Yeah, so I go into the the rubber band shooter here, explaining the effect, of course, which I often have to do. Um, and uh, looking through the extra deck here, deciding what to banish. Banishing Clearwing Synchro Dragon, which is a card, and I don't, I can't remember if I talked about this in a previous episode. I apologize if I have. Sometimes I just repeat myself in episode, different episodes, but that card is like something I want to start summoning more because I think that card is like it's just become increasingly better and better in today's meta. Um, I've even thought about some like random combos that end on like maybe I'll make some like short videos about them, like uh, some new random speedway combos that involve you ending on like Baron, Bestial Disc Potter, yeah. and like Fenrir, or Cheng Ying, Baron and Fenrir, yeah, or ending on something like, uh, you know, High Speed Ray Clearwing Rider and Baron, and then tagging out into Clearwing and Clearwing Fast Dragon on the opponent's turn, right? Those are some, some cool lines. Um, yeah, so additional normal, effect of Yo-Yo, bring out Terror Top, Terror Top effect, um, you know, they just, we're thinking about maybe activating something in response, but they don't have anything just yet. Great and order. at this point, I still have no this idea. This, yeah, so when this is normal <laughs> as you guys can probably tell, I have no idea card that card I'm about to get super poly for five. I take any card and then the rest go back so. Back. Yeah, now uh, I think this is where they actually end up using the effect. Yeah, so they go ahead and use the effect of fusion. Yeah, and I was like, I wanted to read this. I was like, can I bell this? Is there any way, any reason I could bell this particular card? And uh, I couldn't. No way to um, to respond to that. All five. Yeah, I was like, hold on a second here. That's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, that is crazy. I, I forget to sink her off the rubber band shooter. Sure. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that should be uh, that should be gone too. And then I'm like, I have no plays to make, <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, I have no way to get anything on field. So yeah, we just we just admit defeat. Caught me off guard. Not gonna lie. I mean, I mean that's gonna happen, right? You play against a deck you never play against before. That's bound to happen, right? Uh, maybe if I just read more and paid attention a bit more, maybe I could have avoided that. I still think it was the bell on the um, that continuous spell card that ultimately let him get into that. 
Uh, it's just basically holding Bell for the next game. Don't do that. Don't hold your hand traps. Unless you have a valid reason to, obviously, right? Um, so game three here, very interesting hand. I make a very interesting decision, a uh, very heads-up decision. I start with Prosperity, because, uh, like, if I have a hand of just, like, cash cards, and it... For the cash stuff, it's interesting, because if I have, like, Unicorn and Fenrir, I'll hold Prosperity, because that gets me into my Speedroid stuff anyways, uh, until I get interrupted. Uh, but I have, like, something just, like, just Unicorn and nothing else, I'll Prosby first. And I'll usually Prosby for three, because I have a pretty good chance at finding something I need to get me into one of the other two engines that I don't have. Just because, like, those cards are at such high numbers in the deck right now. Like, three Unicorn, three Fenrir, three Planet, Terraforming, and I guess in this build, Small World as well. Um, and here I was very, very hesitant on what I wanted to take here. Because I was like, if I take the Tether Wolf... Right, and I get drolled. I can still make Baron with the uh, Car Turbo and the Tether Wolf, and I can just go Baron Effect, pop the token, play around Super Poly that way, and I end on that. But I have just like an Ashen Hand, and then my hand can just like die to Imperm, and then you know he sets up like a full combo, right? But I was like, if I do this route where I take Nib, right, I can just like normal summon the Piper, spec the Car Turbo. Make SP Little Knight um, or Rubber Band Shooter, um, which again is still still pretty risky. And I can have Nib and Ash as like kind of back up here. I didn't want to take the Small World right now because like if I got drolled and I took Small World, I feel like my hand would just be so much worse off, right? I could end on like an SP and an Ash, which is not something I wanted. So I was like, I'm definitely not taking Small World. Um, and Small World. Small World could technically bridge me into... See, that's the thing. Like, I need a Small World to like, bridge me into like a, a Fenrir right now, and I don't think anything in my hand bridges into Fenrir, uh, which is like kind of infuriating. So after like a long time there, I know it was like, a long time, I take the nib, and I was like, I'm just going to default. And yeah, so they, so they did have the Droll. So they did have the Droll. So like... I was right in not taking the small world there. Um, I wanted to play it cautious. I was like, I can end on SP Little Knight, plus two hand traps, um, and that should hopefully be good enough, right? And the, and the same thing, the same logic was with the Tether Wolf line. I'm like, if I take that, like it's Baron, Ash, Pass. Whereas this way, I have like the most interruptions, right? I just lack in, in follow up. Uh, we have SP Little Knight, we have Ash, we have Nibiru, we just lack follow up. Um, so that that was the reasoning behind that. Uh, probably did a poor job at explaining, but I think you get the point, right? So they activate the Mature Chronicle, um, which each time a monster is a special summon that is a U-Bell monster or mentions U-Bell, place a Chronicle counter on this card. You can move a Chronicle counter from your field to activate one of these effects. So one special summon U-Bell from the grave. Two, add one of your banished cards to your hand. Three, banish a card from your deck. Four, destroy one card from on the field. Five, add Super Poly. Um, so, now it's like kind of a top deck war. I draw Ash for turn, which is like literally the worst draw I could have possibly gotten. Uh, so I just have to go Battle Face, poke in for 16, pass turn. My opponent draws again, sets and passes again. I pick up a Unicorn here, which is great. Um, and I was like, now I can kind of play... So I normal summon out the unicorn, and I go effect to try to grab the second birth here, and my opponent is thinking, and like obviously with having two ashes too, I could like normal summon the ash, uh, make a baron, and then use birth to bring back the unicorn, um, and uh, and try to like keep playing, right? And like even, honestly that would be enough to like kind of go for game, right? 25, 3k, and 16? Yeah, he's at 64, I think that would be enough to go for a game. So they do imperm that, uh, and I do let it resolve, which, uh, not sure why I didn't go for that. I don't even think I was at risk of getting a super poly. Same type, different attribute, same... What is Mud Dragon? Mud Dragon always confuses me. Mud Dragon always confuses me. 
two monsters with the same attribute but different types. So same color, different name. So I'd have, yeah, they could have they could have super poly the unicorn and the baron, I guess. So I'm I'm just being super cautious of super poly because that's what this deck seems like a super poly turbo deck. Um, and it, hell, I mean, it have a, even has a card that searches super poly, which maybe not, doesn't happen that often, but. Um, and yeah, they just didn't open up very well again, which again, this is kind of unfortunate. It'd be nice to have like an actual game. I took a, I took a chance there. Attack, activate effects. Took a chance there uh, on that. Um, I was like, I figured it's probably an Ash. Get rid of same and do I get rid of the Mud Dragon here? I think I do. I think that's just the safer play. Uh, so 25. Yeah, and then I uh, mess that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yep. 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 Um, yep. Normal summon Terror Top activate effects. Yeah. So main phase two, we go for the Terror Top play, and as I play into Super Poly right here, anyways for Garura, like I literally should just kept it so simple: normal Ash, make Baron, bring back Unicorn, and just set up that whole play. Um, but my opponent apparently does not have Super Poly. Uh, whatsoever here, unless they're just waiting for something else, um, I go ahead and synchro 10 into Baron, and then we uh, use Baron, the Baron here to get rid of the set. It's an evenly matched, um, so no super probably worries now. We can just go ahead and freely resolve, um, effects here, and, uh, yeah, we'd reveal two. One of them is Judgment. Obviously, we're gonna take the Judgment. <laughs> Obviously, we take the judgment 10 times out of 10. And do I go for Wind Pegasus here? <laughs> yeah, making sure I can stop whatever great top deck he has, because he clearly needs a good top deck right now, obviously. So, clear everything with Wind Pegasus and Baron. And they normal the Droll, and they decide to take themselves out valiantly, and we, uh, we take the dub there. Uh, very interesting match. Definitely learned a lot about the deck that I'll uh, hopefully remember for future encounters with it uh, but yeah that's gonna do it hope you guys enjoyed leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and last but not least a big shout out goes to our current divine level channel members who are pony stark misfit Cadillac, hh cyber green and robin's assistant thank you guys so much as always for extremely kind and very very generous support of this channel